top traders in the industry. And it's the place to receive quality education and all while interacting with traders and investors who are just like you. So what we try to do there is have uh, you know free educational events. Uh, we've got relationships with top traders like Fausto. Uh, you know, Fausto is a guy you guys know with you know over I think now it's like 12 trading championships. And so you know we'll have him come on and do some educational sessions you know for our group. Uh, it's very laid back. Uh, we want you guys to enjoy the loans, just like Fausto said uh, when he was giving you the intro. And then also we try to, you know, we want to trade well, uh, but we also want to do good. And 10% and of any revenues generated through our site are given to charities, uh, typically with uh, an inner city focus, um, inner city revitalization or education. So uh, to tell you a little bit about myself, I started learning about the market at the age of 16. I've traded stocks, options, futures, Forex, and Nadex. Uh, and really, one of the cool things is that that I've had the opportunity to learn from some really excellent traders. And so I'll tell you, as far as trading goes, I don't have many original ideas. A lot of the stuff I've learned has been, you know, from people like Fausto. And so uh, I think with sort of the move to the, you know, to the online age that we saw several years ago, you know, gave that uh, capability. I saw somebody in here earlier typed in there from Bangkok, you know, and, and so you've got, you know, a, a um, Trader out of New York, you've got Falco, you've got uh, somebody like myself who's out of Mobile. I'm actually in Chicago today, but uh, logged in. And then we've got somebody over in Bangkok, somebody at Lake Gunnersville in Alabama. Uh, you know, it's just really cool how everyone can come together as a community. And so what I've tried to do is take uh, some great traders like that and put it together and, and offer the opportunity, uh, you know, to learn. And so I launched Trading Pub in July of 2011, really after thinking, you know, I've learned and had the opportunity to learn from so many great traders and uh, wanted to also, you know, kind of provide a uh, central place that that could happen for you guys too. And then in 2013 of this year, I launched the website marketdeal.com, which uh, basically is kind of like a group on for trading, but everything's 100% off. So it's all free stuff. Uh, I can tell you as a lifelong Cubs fan, I've been conditioned for patience and accepting losses. So that uh, translates well into the trading world. Um, real quick, if you can um, answer this question, if, if you can, which of the following represents how you feel about your trading? So again, which of the following, number one or number two? So, you know, so, some days some days might be number one, some days might be a number two um, there, but, you know, it, you, know you have a good journey. Yeah, right, like Brian said, it's up and down. So hopefully, hopefully you're not, you know, ending every day. Uh, you know, feeling like you're number two, like you're just throwing money away. Uh, but again, you know, some of those days you feel like you really, you know, just hit it right. Everything's, you know, going on all cylinders. And then other days, you know, you look at it and think, man, I'm, you know, long Tesla from $109 and another car caught on fire. You know, that's a number two type of a day. So, um, you know, what we want to try to talk about is maybe some strategies today that uh, you can use to help transition from the number two slot over to number one so so we definitely don't want you throwing money uh you know down the toilet and, and so if you're struggling with trading you know how we recommend uh you know trying to get some type of uh you know education or mentorship from someone like Falso, uh you know and be able to watch and see what a live trader is doing in his own account people who will trade live in front of you uh and try to learn about that but today's topic is going to be on defined risk trading and so uh, how many of you have seen the disclaimer of course that, you know, you can lose more money than is in your account, basically, you know, that, you know, you're trading on margin or you are, um, you know, trading a leveraged product. You know, I think pretty much, you know, if you've traded options before, if you've opened a margin account, you've seen that disclaimer. Well, with the trades that uh, we're going to cover today, every trade has a defined risk, which means that you can, that the second you get into the trade, you know exactly how much risk you're going to be taking. And so we're going to be covering some of those. So the first thing we're going to talk about is basically, uh, you know, reasons we lose as a trader, which is pretty easy, you know, especially, so, you know, a lot of you guys did say, hey, I it, you know, feel like I've been throwing money in the toilet lately. You know, the thing is, is that, that we tend to traders, you know, we'll throw money in the toilet, but we don't think about why we're throwing money in the toilet. We just continue doing it. And, you know, we just think that one day we'll wake up and we'll have that magic bullet that we start making money. But really, you have to be able to understand why you're losing money and then look at those opportunities and say, how can I, uh, you know, take each of these things, which is currently a negative thing, 
and learn from it and turn it around. I'll talk a little bit about Nadex, uh, about how it works. Uh, we'll talk about binary options. We'll talk about spread. And then I'm going to cover um, three strategies that you can test out and then show you how to basically do a demo uh, if you want to uh, give it a shot. But, you know, some of the reasons we lose money, and, and I'll go through uh, some of these. This is not an all-encompassing list, but obviously over-trading. Uh, another thing could be, you know, you're not experienced and you kind of jump into things before you're ready. Uh, another thing that uh, causes a lot of people to lose money is too much leverage. And, you know, the sense that maybe you buy something, uh, it really is a good trade, but it, um, you know, you're too heavily leveraged on it. So, so you have to get out before you can really see the trade play out. And yeah, Mark, we'll take a look at that, uh, talk about volume a little bit uh, as we get into it. But the, the main reason, think, if, if you can type in the main reason that you lose money when you trade. So, so when you have a bad day, uh, bad trading day, what's the main thing that causes you to lose money? Okay, not experienced. I think probably a lot of people say over trading. Um, lack of a plan, right? Okay. Well, in my opinion, with, you know, learning from literally hundreds of professional traders and, um, you know, having thousands of individual traders, uh, you know, like you guys and, and Joe kind of hit the head on holding losers and selling winners. You know, Gary said money management. In my opinion, the number one reason traders lose money is that their losses are much bigger than their gains. And, you know, over trading is bad. You know, trading with too much leverage can be bad. But I've found, you know, when, when you look at most people who lose money, the number one reason, uh, if you really drill it down, is that the losses are much bigger than their gains. And so what I'd really encourage you to do is to do a quick experiment um, or exercise. You can do this after the webinar, you can do it now, um, you can do it tomorrow, but but I really would encourage you to do this. Look at your last 10 trades. And and here's a question for you guys. If I told you, if I said I've got a trading system that is 87% accurate, all right, that makes money 87% of the time, how many of you would say, Sign me up, I'll blindly follow it. How many people would say, that sounds great, I'll do it? If I told you that it made money 87% of the time. All right, most people would say yes. All right, now what if what if I told you, yeah, it, it says, it says something. now what if I told you, okay, here's the way the trading system works. Uh, basically, we uh, you know buy a stock and we try to make five cents, but we risk $10 doing it. Right. And see, Eric and Mark, I'm guessing they've, they've probably got a little more experience in this. The key is it, it's not so much how often you're right and how often you're wrong. The key is how much do you make when you're right and how much do you lose when you're wrong. And so that kind of goes back into this main reason I feel like people lose money is that they focus more on, okay, can I be right 80% of the time, 70 or 60 or 50, you know, and it might be that you know you're better off being right 30% of the time, but making more money when you're right. And so that's the that's really the experience um, that I want you to have when you go through this exercise. Look at your last 10 trades, and and it's really something to do going forward. But you know, think about how many winning trades you have and how many losing trades you have. Then look at the amount of winning trades you have versus the amount of losing trades, and do the math. And here's a quick example. Let's say that we take 10 trades and my average gains 100 bucks. My average loss is $450. Um, so basically, you know, I make money eight times, I make 100 bucks, that's $800. If when I'm wrong, the two times out of 10, I lose 450, then after 10 trades, I've actually lost $100 and that's before commissions. Well, you know, I'm right 80% of the time, but I'm losing money. So I've got to either figure out how can I become right 90% of the time? Or how can I change my risk and reward? Now, another example, think about this. Let's say I'm right 40% of the time, right? So if I'm right 40% of the time, if I can make $300 when I'm right, that's a total of $1,200. If I have an average loss of 150 on the six times I'm wrong, I actually have a net gain after the 10 days, all right? And yeah, like Brian said, you can move up the stop. But by doing this exercise after you're in the trade, 
it'll show you where you need to be. So you can look at it and say, okay, either I've got to improve my accuracy or I need to work on my risk and reward. And I think one of the biggest issues people have when they get into trades is they don't have a profit target. And I know, um, you know, you guys have probably seen Fausto do this in the live trade room, or if you, you know, see him do the live contest, you know, every time he does a trade, does he buy it and just hold it till the close every day, you know, hoping that that stock goes to infinity? No, he'll get in, it'll hit his target, and then he'll get out. And so when he gets in that trade, he knows where he's going to be wrong, knows where he's going to be right, and he'll take that. Now, what most people do is that you kind of get hammered into you so much, hey, you got to have a stop, you got to watch your risk. You focus on that, but you don't focus on your reward. So you get into the trade with half a plan. Basically, you buy a stock, you put your stop in, but then you don't know what do you do when it when it goes your way. Um, and whether, you know, you move your stop up or, or what, you still need to have some type of plan because most stocks, most trades are not going to go to infinity. You know, most shorts are not going to go to zero. Most longs are not going to go to infinity. At some point, you need to get out of that trade and move on. So, again, really encourage you to do that. If you don't take anything else away from this, um, please just take the time and do this exper experiment. Uh, on your own account. And I guarantee if you'll start focusing on that, it will help improve your trading because you might look at it and let's say after a large enough sample size, I realize, hey, I'm right. Let's say I'm only right 60% of the time or I'm, maybe I'm only right 50% of the time. Well, if that's the case and I see a trade setup that I need to risk about $300 for and I think it only has a profit potential of 100 bucks, I know I can't take that trade because the percentages over time means that I'm basically guaranteeing myself to lose money. So I only want to take trades that fit into that profit potential. All right, so getting kind of into how to trade with defined risk, uh, how many of you have heard of Nadex before? Just type in a yes or a no. All right, good, so we've got a mix in here. Some, some people have, some people have not. Hey, Gail, good to see you in here. Um, Nadex is the North American Derivative Exchange. And basically, they've got two types of products. They have a spread product, and they have a binary option product. And now, when you hear when you hear the term binary option, uh, one thing I want to caution you against: there's a lot of binary option stocks, you know, that are located offshore, located in Cyprus. Um, not to say that all offshore binary options are a scam, but they're not regulated, you know, by the CFTC. They're not regulated by the NFA. So, anytime you're sending money somewhere where you know the broker is not regulated holding your money. And anytime you're sending money somewhere and the person who's holding your money is on the other side of the trade, then typically the odds are not going to be stacked in your favor. You know, it's kind of like, you know, casinos aren't built because people win a bunch of money every time they go, right? Casinos are built because they end up with the money at the end of the night. Now you might win. Every now and then you might win, you know, once or twice, but at the end of the day, the casino is going to win. And that's for the, you know, vast majority of people. And, and the same thing goes for a lot of the offshore binary option firms is that they're not regulated. They're taking the other side of the trade. Basically, they're just dealing against you. And so if you ever decide to trade a type of binary option, highly recommend trading it on exchange, uh, on Nadex, which means that you're, you know, trading somewhere where the money is is regulated and the trades are regulated uh, meaning that they just facilitate the buys and sells they're not on the other side of the trade so they're cftc registered electronic futures exchange uh, the contracts are and this is really the cool thing about it the contracts are actually designed for retail individual traders and so when you hear the term retail there's two types of traders there's institutional and there's retail and pretty much all of us fall under the retail category institutional would be like a bank or a large hedge fund. So retail uh, stands for the individual trader. So this exchange was actually formed for individual traders to trade. There's a very low cost of entry. Uh, you can actually open live accounts with as little as hundred dollars. I recommend doing you know, at least a thousand. But uh, the contracts can be very small, which means that um, you can test things in a live market. And how, let me ask you a question: How many people? Have uh, you know had success in a sim account, but then struggled once they went live? Many people have fallen prone to the uh, 
sim account blue, basically where you do well in your sim account, go live and struggle. I know I have. Um, and and that's the thing is that, that when you go from a sim account to a live account, all of a sudden you add in the psychology and the emotion that come with trading live. And it's not, it's it's definitely not something you know that's easy to do. Well, the advantage of Nadex is you can trade live, you can trade a small amount in in a live account without risking a whole lot of money. And so there's low cost of entry. Every trade has limited risk, but no max gain and max loss. And they're the only US exchange that accepts direct retail members. So when you open an account, they can become a member of the exchange. There's no membership fee. Uh, the initial deposit, the minimum is $100, and uh, the exchange fee is 90 cents per lot. Um, so basically, there's no commission off the trade. It's just an exchange fee of nine cents, and then fees are capped at nine dollars per order. So real quick to kind of give you an overview of what a binary option is, we'll talk about binary options and we'll talk about spread, and uh, then I'll show you a few examples. Right, and Mark will go through that also uh, to talk about liquidity. A binary option is a simple short-term contract. Uh, they have intraday, daily, and weekly contracts. So the longest term contract you can trade is weekly. Every trade is fully collateralized, limited risk. And basically the way a binary works is it's a yes or no proposition. So it's very straightforward. Um, yeah, they do have a uh, they do have a demo account. I'll try to post the link for you guys at the end of this where you can open a demo account and play around with it. But effectively a binary would be saying, um, okay, let's see what type in what what's something that you guys trade. Type in a uh, market you guys trade. Okay, the euro euro USD. All right, so uh, we'll we'll use that example. Um, so so the euro USD. Let's say the euro USD is at you know one thirty seven fifty. Right, so one thirty seven fifty. A binary option might be okay for the euro USD to close above 138. All right. So if the euro is trading at 137.50, uh, the binary option says it's going to close above 138. If you buy that contract, and let's let's look at this. Let's see who who has said that. Um, okay, Suzanne. Okay, so Suzanne's looking at the euro, and she says, "Hey, I think the euro is going to trade above 138." 13800 today. And I'm looking at it and say, I don't think the euro is going to trade below 138. So basically, there's a trade there. So the binary contract might be trading at, say, $20. All right. So the way it works, the way it's priced, is the binary contract's priced from zero to 100. So at expiration, it's either going to be yes or no. It's either going to be above 138 or it's going to be below 138. So if at the, you know, at the morning, session, we're looking at it, and the euro is at 137.50, and the 138 contract is trading at 20, uh, basically $20, all right? So Suzanne looks at it and says, hey, I think the euro is going to rally. I'm going to buy this at 20. And I look at it and say, hey, I think, you know, the euro is either going to be flat or I don't think it'll rally at 138. I'm going to sell it at 20. All right, if the highest amount it can go is 100, how much can Suzanne make? So if she buys it at 20, the highest it can go is 100. How much can she make? 80, right? Okay. So she would make $80 if it goes above 138. If I sell it at 20, all right, what's the most that I can make by selling it at 20? The lowest it can go is zero, right? So basically, I would make $20. Now, you know, most of us would probably agree that, uh, you know, Suzanne would be right. I would be wrong. Uh, so. Um, you know, we'll definitely give the uh, advantage to, to the lady traders in the room. Uh, so basically, Suzanne buys it at 20. I sell it at 20 to her. The euro rallies, uh, goes to 138.10 and closes there for the day. Suzanne basically cashes out at 100. And I was short at 20, so I have to cash out. So basically, I shorted at 20. That means I bought it back at 100 effectively when it settled. So I would lose eighty dollars. Suzanne would make eighty dollars. Does that make sense to everybody? As as far as how a binary option works, and and basically the way that they're priced is it's a probability. So you can look at whatever price it's trading at and think, okay, that's the percentage that um, of probability that this will happen. So 
if it was trading at 20 at the time, so this, this thing has a 20% chance of getting there. If the euro at the time was right at 138 and the contract with the strike price was 138, it would be trading at 50. So anytime a binary option is trading right at a strike price, it's going to be at 50. So because basically, if it's trading right at that price, you know there's a 50 50 probability, so it would be priced that way. Um, if that makes sense to everyone. So let's say that we're in that trade, and one of the things you don't have to stay in until expiration. So let's say that you know Suzanne looked at it, it trades up to 138 even, you know, over lunchtime, which means the binary that she bought at 20 is now trading at 50, and she says, you know what, you know, I've already made you know 30 dollars. I've invested 20. I made 30. Uh, doubled my money basically. I will. Um, I want to just get out of this trade. She can sell it at 50 and be done. And, and so you can trade in and out of it. Currently, it is only for U.S. residents. Uh, they are working on, and I've got a meeting with these guys tomorrow, uh, but they're working on rolling it out uh, where they can have non-U.S. clients. Um, all right, here we go. All right, so five things that I have, five rules that I kind of came up with for binary option trading. Uh, number one is that I'm not the smartest person in the world. I understand that. I think uh, that's something that traders, if, if a lot of us would go ahead and get that out there beforehand, that uh, you'd probably do better. You can't be uh, stubborn with the market. You just have to understand you're going to be wrong. Trading's not a, a game of perfection. You're, ne you're never going to be perfect. I think even, you know, the best traders are wrong, um, you know, 15, 20, 30 percent of the time. And, uh, you know, I think you ask Fausto if he ever loses money, he'd tell you yes. You know, he, he's not right every time, but the key is understanding that and not letting the losses overtake your gain. So, uh, you know, number one, I'm not the smartest person in the world. Number two, I look at overall market direction. And so I want to be trading with my field, the overall market direction. Where people can get into trouble with binary options is they look at it and they do it just as a lotto ticket. You know, so they say, hey, um, I have no idea where the market's going, but I think that it's definitely not going to do this. So I'll just put on this binary and make 20 bucks real quick, or you know, I'll put on this binary and take a shot and probably make, you know, risk 10 bucks to make 90 bucks. If, if you don't have a reason for being in the trade, you don't need to be in the trade. When I'm bullish on something, uh, if, if I think the, the particular market's going to go up, uh, I'll look to buy the binary around 60 to 80 in price. And remember how I told you that the price reflects probability. So basically what I'm wanting to do is buy something that has a little bit of an edge, which means I don't have to be, you know, a hundred percent right on it in order to make money. I want to give myself a little bit of cushion. So for instance, in the case with um, in the case with the trade with Suzanne where it was at 137.50 and the strike was 138, by selling that at 20, I had if I had at least 50 ticks where I could still be right and make money. So basically, if I thought the euro was going to go down and I sell that binary option at, at 20, if it rallies 30, 30 ticks, you know, technically I was wrong on direction to the rally, but I was right on the trade uh, because I gave myself enough room to look. If I'm bearish, I look to sell uh, at a price at 25 to 40. If I'm very bullish, I'll look, you know, I might actually flip that a little bit. And take more risk on uh, in return for more reward. So really, what you look at is the there's a direct correlation between the probability of the trade and the payout. So the higher the probability of success, the lower the payout's going to be, right? Uh, I mean, kind of kind of like if, if you look at um, odds. It was interesting. I was reading an article. I don't I don't know if we have any um, basketball fans in here, uh, but they were they were saying that the uh, Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, you know, they're expecting them to win, I think, 16 games this season out of 82 games in the basketball season. Well, their odds of winning a championship, you know, if you wanted to go to Las Vegas and put money on the 76ers winning the NBA Finals this year, it would pay out at 9,900 to 1. And they asked the they asked the guy, they said, well, how did you come up with that number? And said, well, our computer wouldn't let us put a higher number. So basically, he's telling you, you know, it's not going to happen, right? Well, if it does happen, the people who put money on that are going to get paid out, you know, very, very well. You know, 9,900 to one, you know, biggest payout you would probably see. So, but what are the odds of that happening? You know, it's like the lotto. 
you know, it'd be great to win the lotto, but why is the lotto still around? It's because most people don't win the same thing with casinos. So you just have to think about that and remember that every trade you look at risk and reward, it all comes down to probability. And whenever you're trading binary options, use that 50 level, sort of as if somebody asked a question about stops, uh, they don't allow stops as with limit orders only. But what I'll do is use the 50 level on the binary option as, as sort of the middle area that I need to get out of that trade. So if if I'm you know selling something at 20, you know, and playing the odds, saying, hey, I think this thing's gonna gonna you know stay down or it's not gonna rally up. If the binary option trades up to 50, I'll look to get out of that trade. What you don't want to do, this is where people get into trouble, is that you sell something at 20 and then let it go all the way to 100 you take a dollar loss. That's where you get into the small gains and large loss kind of trades. Uh, Suzanne, yeah, I'll try to I'll try to get that later um, when we get through some examples. It, I'll I'll try to work in how to adjust the position. All right, so here's here's an example of binary option movement. Um, this is a screenshot taken. Basically, uh, these things will trade, you know, just like anything else. You see that it started out trading, you know, down here around 30 as the price. This is on the US 500, which is the S and P. As the price of the S and P rally, you see the binary option rally. As the price of the underlying falls, you see it falls. So I know that uh, you know Cyber Trading University has a lot of good forex education as well. Uh, Nadex has contracts for forex trading, so you can use some of the things you apply in the forex market to trade these contracts, these underlying contracts. Or you know, if you're looking at the S&P 500 or the Dow or the Nasdaq, uh, you can use that to trade uh, Nadex contracts. You look at where the euro is going or where the S&P is going, and then you go find the Nadex contract that relates to that. But as you can see, uh, there's you know several opportunities throughout the day. Uh, with this thing moving, it can be very volatile. It can be a very good trading tool to look at. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is, is this is sort of the one of the credit strategies. You look at something with a low probability and a high reward. Here's a screenshot that you see on gold, and what we have here is uh, you see the and two real quick. Are you guys seeing the um, you guys seeing my mouse as it moves around the screen? I want to make sure you guys can see that. Okay. All right, so um, you see here's the price of gold that, that you see here. This is in the futures market at 13.55. All right, and here's a binary option that's at 13.59. Okay, so so basically, and you see the time here. That's about 9:45, and you have it for 1:30. Well, if you felt like gold was going to rally, you felt like you're looking at gold here and say, hey, I think gold's going to go up to um, 13.50. Two, okay, or sorry, 1360. Let's say you think gold is going to go to 1360. Well, this binary is for gold to be over 1359 at 130. So it allows you to effectively buy that contract. You pay $29 for it. If you paid at the ask, you can split it. You don't have to hit the bid or the ask. You know, that's just the um, inside spread. So you could say maybe pay 28, 27, et cetera. And basically, your max profit would be 71. Your max loss is what you pay. Um, Mark, that's actually just from the Open eCraft platform right there. Um, that's what you see on the screen. That's the dome on the right. This is the ADAX platform over here. I think you're asking about the depth of market screen here. So that's the Open eCraft platform. But um, basically, we put that up just so you can kind of see an example. That would be a low prob probability, high reward trade. Okay. So basically, meaning, um, is it sound okay for you guys? I wonder if it's if it's just mics in um, in and out. Okay, mostly okay. Okay, all right. I'm so yeah. I'll try to slow down a little bit. Should be a little better. Um, but basically, what you see here is that in order for us to make money on this trade, we have to be right and we have to have gold rally at least four points. So that's why we're going to get paid more uh, for that because gold. If gold only rallies two bucks. Then we were right on the direction, but we were wrong on timing and it didn't move at all. So again, that's a high probability payout. Here is a, or sorry, a high reward payout. Here's an example of a high probability low reward payout. All right, look at gold here, 1355. Let's say that we are looking at it. We think gold's going to go up, uh, but we don't know how much it'll go up. So we say, hey, we'll go in the money basically 
and this binary set will be above 1351. So basically, we're giving ourselves four or five points of cushion here, and we can still make money. Well, the max profit on this, if we were to pay 88 for, or 87 for it, you see here, the max profit is $13. The max loss is 87. Now you look at that and you think, well, you know, that's not really a good risk reward. And I would say yes if you plan on staying in this thing, you know, all the way to zero. Now, if you're able to manage the trade and use the um, risk reward that I talked about of using that 50 area, so if gold starts to fall off and gets down to the 135150, then that's where where you look to get out of trade at 50. Now all of a sudden, you know, you're really only risking 30 in order to make 13, so it's not quite as bad, and this is a high probability trade. So this is a trade you should look to be right on in the 80% uh, type of range. So if you're looking at gold and you think gold's going up, there's two ways to play it. Number one, you can take a lower probability but get a higher reward, or number two, you can take a higher probability and get a lower reward. So again, it just depends on how confident you are in the move and how much you think it's going to move and and that's basically how you would kind of back into it now the bull spread contract is basically uh think of this like trading a stock uh but having a range that you're trading so let's say that you know we're looking at um a stock like tesla all right and let's say that I say hey you can trade tesla but you can only trade the range of 160 to 170. So that means if you buy it at 164, the most you can lose is four dollars. If you buy it at 164, the most you can make is six dollars. It's kind of like a debit spread. But basically it allows you to trade a contract, you know, just outright. You don't have to worry about the binary stuff. Um, you know, don't have to worry about being at a certain price at a certain time. Uh, but you can stay in it, but it has a floor and a ceiling. And basically it's, it's again one dollar per tick. With more volatile markets, uh, kind of the strategy that I use is I'll try to buy near the floor or sell near the ceiling to minimize risk. So an example like that would be crude oil on a Wednesday or the S&P on a non payroll or the Euro USD um, on an ECB announcement. So what I'll look to do is, is say, okay, if I can get in this Euro trade, we're trading near the floor of a particular spread. You know, I'll risk 100 bucks, and if news comes out and this runs, you know, 100 or 200 ticks, you know, I can possibly make a thousand or two thousand dollars, but I've got limited risk. Now, how many of you have been in a situation before where you buy a stock or you buy, you know, a Forex contract, you buy a futures contract, and you buy the contract, it goes right down to your stop, it stops you out, and then it turns out to be a great trade. How many people have had that happen before? I think pretty much anybody in trading would say yes, you know, right, yes, 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 exactly. Well, the cool thing with a spread is that you're not stopped out. There's a floor. So let's say that I'm trading a spread on um, the euro right now, and the spread is from 137.50 to 138, and we're trading maybe at 137.60, all right? Well, if I buy it at 137.60 and it trades down to 137.40, the most I've lost is the 10 cents to the bottom of the spread. The most that I can lose is that 10 cents to the floor, right? So I don't have to worry about having a stop in. Uh, if I'm just trading it outright, I buy it at 137.60, I put my stop in at 137.40, it goes down to that low tick, stops me out, and then it rallies up to 138. Well, if I'm trading the spot, I'm stopped out and just out of money. If I'm trading the Nadex spread, it went down, I was wrong, but then it came back and I'm still in that trade. So that's the advantage of having that default risk without being stopped out of the trade. Uh, and then for less volatile markets, so you have to think about this. So why would somebody give you an edge like that? Well, they're going to get a little bit of premium from you in order to do that. So for less volatile markets, we'll look at premium levels and actually take advantage of that by buying closer to the ceiling or selling closer to the floor. So basically, we'll bring on more risk um, from the trade, but we'll get a little bit of a reward in the way that we do the premium. And, and two, another advantage is just in the margin. You know, right now, for instance, you know, to trade gold, uh, for those of you that are futures traders, you know, you've got to have at least, 
you know, probably 15,000 per contract in your account. It depends on the broker, but that's probably a safe amount where, you know, you can put a trade on here, you know, trade five contracts and your max loss is 500 bucks. So that's how much money is required for the trade because it's fully collateralized. So again, it's very important to understand that. So there's three strategies I'm going to go over and kind of kind of end with today. I'll, sh I'll show you a couple of examples and then you know we'll probably wrap up in about 10 minutes and I'll just share with you some uh, some free videos that you can check out with demo account. But uh, talk about credit strategy on um, on crude oil. Here's an example from yesterday. So you look at crude. Let's say that at the time you see crude trading at 9842. What I tried to do is just use even numbers to show you this example. Uh, but basically, let's say that you're looking at crude and say, hey, I think crude's in a range today. I just don't think it's going to move. There's no move today. You know, it's a slow day in the market. The S&P, you know, continuing to make all-time highs and, you know, everything's good. I don't really see, you know, crude well going down. And, and so I think it'll stay between, you know, 98 and 99. Well, basically, what you could do is put on two sides of this trade. Number one, you look at crude and say, okay, I'd Definitely think it's not going to go above nine dollars today. I'll sell this at nine fifty or ten bucks or whatever, and bring in ten dollars on that side of the trade. All right. Step two. I think it's going to stay above ninety-eight, so I'll buy this one at you know eighty-one, which will bring a profit of nineteen dollars. Well, basically, this is kind of like an iron condor. So you look at this trade and you say, okay, I make nineteen dollars. I make ten dollars. So that's basically twenty-nine dollars. Just say thirty dollars to for to make it easy. And basically, you're putting up $70 worth of risk in order to make $30, okay? And you have a probability on your side, who can rally or sell off 40 cents and you still make money on the trade. And they have these things you can do it by the hour, you can do it by the end of, you know, the pit trading, you can do it by the end of the day or the end of the week. And so obviously, the more time you take home, the more premium that's going to be there uh, in the trade. And so. You can look at that and basically construct a credit strategy uh, like an iron condor. And, you, and you, know, you could go into crude, gold, the euro, the CAD, uh, the pound, the yen, the, um, you know, any of the commodities, the S&P, the Dow, um, you know, the NASDAQ, the DAX, you name it. You know, pretty much any major, uh, you know, major index market is going to be in there as well. So again, this is, you know, call it a credit strategy because basically you're playing the odds and looking to bring that in. So, so you say, well, you know, $30 isn't a lot left on one contract and you look at your return on risk, it's pretty good. So the key with a strategy like this, like I said, is let's look at it and say, okay, what happens if crude drops to 98? Well, all of a sudden this thing drops to 98. That means this is at 50. So you get out of this trade. So if you bought it at 80, you sell it at 50, you lose 30 bucks, but also you would have made $10 over here because that would expire worthless. You can't lose on both sides, right? Uh, so basically this would be pretty much worthless and you get out of that and make the 10 bucks and effectively lose $20 on the trade that went completely against you. If you're right, you're making $30. That's how you get your risk to work, work today. What you don't want to do is sit there and say, well, I'll stick with this and then crude continues to drop and you end up losing $80, $81 on the trade. And that messes up your risk and reward for the whole uh, set of 10 trades. That's why you've got to keep track of it. All right, so again, that's the credit strategy. And basically what you can do, you know, you pull up your platform, you know, find support, find resistance. And if you think that it's going to be a dead market, look at putting these strategies on. This is not for a strategy for a training market. If there's, you know, a Fed announcement or something, some big news coming out, you definitely don't want to put this strategy on. This is more for a slower developing market uh, that you feel is not going to move a whole lot. And again, you know, anytime a contract settles, you get an email that your position improved, you know, settled, uh, settlement price, you know, payout about 100. And you see here, this was a binary, this is just an example of a settlement, but uh, you see here, this is a binary um, above 92, you can see that it settled at 92.03, so the payout amount is 100. But, Basically, the way that works, as soon as the trade happens, about a minute after the trade um, happens, you see here, this was the settlement time. I'm on central time. So, so you see they use Eastern, so 2.30 and 3 seconds Eastern. That's when 
when that email is sent, NCO is sent at 1.30. Uh, that's central time. So again, you can get it almost immediately when it settles. And the money's back in your account. It's available for withdrawal. You don't have to wait a day. Uh, you know, you can basically do whatever you want with it. All right. Um, real quick before I go to the next next trade example, um, that's just a straight up credit strategy. So the first one was playing both sides. This is going to be looking at playing just one side of it. Does anybody have any questions so far? And we'll we'll get through these next two in probably the next ten minutes, and then I'll um, you know take take any questions you might have and show you some links we'll see with some free videos. All right. Well, good deal. So uh, example number two, again, this is this is basically a one leg credit strategy. Um, a CD, they do not have stops. So it's limit orders only. You do have to watch the time guys. So this isn't necessarily a, you know, you hear some guys who will tell you a strategy to like set it and forget it, you know, go put it on and go play golf. This is something that you would actually want to watch um, and watch it develop. So here's an example of the S&P yesterday. You can see, you know, let's say that you see the S&P here, um, you know, trading around the 17, you know, 56 area. You feel like, hey, you know, there's resistance up here at 17.63. We're not going to get there. So I'll take a credit trade. And basically what you're doing here is, again, you, you look at the return on the risk. You say, I'll make $7.50. You know, I'm risking 92 bucks, but obviously, you know, the odds are in your favor here. But what you have to be careful of is that you don't allow this to be a full loss. This is a very high probability trade, um, but it's a low reward trade. So again, high probability, low reward. It's a credit type strategy. And you can kind of see an example. Here's a look right after putting the trades on. You know, we can see it. Here's the crude where you're long, you know, one. Um, here's the crude oil where you're short, uh, short one. And then here's the S&P trade where you're long. You see, you know, that's just a look from the Nadex platform of how they'll look on your screen. And here's an example of the movement. You see, here's the example where we showed you where you sell at 18. And notice it traded down to six. It came back up to about 15. And then as we get close to expiration, notice how, how it falls off as we get to expiration. Uh, that's that time value coming off the trade. So again, you see some rallying. Basically what happened here, crude sold off. And immediately after getting in, you saw it drop down. It came back to that point, could never quite get back above it, you know, never got close to the $20 to $30 area. Um, and then as we got to um, expiration, you see it traded all the way down to a dollar and, and effectively was um, worthless. But again, lots of good trading opportunities in there. For those of you that are in front of your screen, uh, can be some good trading opportunities uh, in these markets. All right, so strategy number two. So we covered some credit strategies. This is more involving the spread. Uh, remember how I talked about with a volatile market, you want to buy near the bottom of the spread or sell near the top. So here's a look at the S&P, uh, S&P 500. That you see here, it's this is at you know 1015, uh, basically that you could look at. And if you wanted to be long the S&P, you know I can definitely buy it here at 1753. You know knowing where we are now, it would have been nice to have done so, right? Uh, the market just goes straight up every day. But you see here, so let's say I want to buy the S&P. Well, I'll buy it here and I need to put my stop in somewhere. Well, what happens if it comes down and stops me out and then it rallies up to the all-time high so I get those every day? Well, I missed it because I got stopped out. The way the spread works, you can buy it here, 1756. All right, your max loss is 100 max gain if it got to 1785 would be 1400. And basically trading five contract funds, Nadex is the equivalent of trading one e mini futures contract. So for $100 risk, I can stay in this trade, you know, from 10.15 until 4.15 some time. So again, basically you buy yourself all that time. Uh, so on a very volatile day, this would be a strategy today that you basically pay up, you pay a little bit of premium, and you're able to stay long all day for a risk of $100. You know, you know, if the market drops 10 points and rallies back, you're still in the trade here. You know, if the market drops 10 points and you're in the futures market, you're stopped out, you're, you know, out some money. So again, that's for volatile contracts, you know, like oil on a Wednesday or a non-farm payroll or other trades like that. 
you're looking for to buy near the bottom or sell near the top. And then strategy three is really um, just the reverse of that. So for instance, let's say that I'm looking at this trade, I think, hey, that's a decent rally the rest of the day. Well, it's trading at 17.53 right now, right? Everybody see that on the dome? That's the example. Well, this spread, notice it had a floor of 17.25 and a ceiling of 17.55. Well, I can come over here and buy the Nadex contract at 17.51.40, all right? So I could buy that at a discount, basically locking in a couple points. So the way that this works is at 4.15, this is going to cash settle based on where the future is traded. So as we get closer, to um, as we get closer to 4:15, closer to the close, you'll see that spread come closer, and so basically you'd see the Nadex and the S&P trading at the same price. So if I think if I'm looking at this market, and I think, hey, I think it's going to be a slow day, but I do think we'll trade up, you know, to maybe about 17.55, 17.56 throughout the end of the day. You know, I can buy the Nadex contract here, get about a dollar or two dollars. Um, premium and make the same exact trade. So basically, you know, you're just giving yourself a way to make some more money on the trade. The downside to this, obviously, if it runs up to, you know, 1800 by the end of the day, your gains cap. So you see here, that's, that's one example of using that spread premium in your favor. So instead of being an example two, where you're the one paying the premium in order to have a high reward and low risk, in this example, and in this example, you're actually the one that's benefiting from the premium and trying to buy it um, in order to do that. So um, I hope that makes sense. Again, it, it's a new thing. I know a lot of you guys probably haven't seen that before, but I know with a lot of the strategies that you learn you know, from Fausto, you can actually apply this and uh, you know, it might help you out in your trading. You can also do things where let's say that you think that the S&P is, um, you know, going to drop a lot. You could sell the futures market, all right? Um, you could effectively sell the futures market and then, or sorry, let's say you think that's something going to rally a lot. You could buy the futures market and then sell the spread. So you'd flip that max profit in a vertical and you could be protected down to 1725, uh, you know, for only about $160. So the way that's a completely different presentation. Uh, it's a hedging strategy that um, that you can look at, and I think we've got it on video. Um, I'll type this link in if you know if you felt like this stuff today was helpful. Um, and this is just a free video. We don't we don't have any products for sale at the Trading Club, but uh, you can click on this link, which should take you to a page here, and basically it's our free Nadex library. Uh, you put your name in, and um, it'll email you several different videos. Uh, an intro to Nadex, it'll give you a demo link to Nadex. It'll um, also give you um, a video that has that head strategy. So, you know, check it out. Um, you know, check our site out, we're tradingpub.com. I'll type that in, marketdeal.com. Uh, we recently had Fausto on a, um, we had a 24 hour trade a thon where we brought in people to do live trading and education for 24 hours straight. And uh, Fausto was one of the guests on there and did a great job. So uh, we'll definitely have him back again. But I appreciate Fausto, uh, Greg, Denise, all the great people at uh, Cyber Trading University um, for having us on here at CTU. And you, know, you guys have been a great partner and uh, appreciate all of you guys here in the room today. So. Uh, yeah, David, I believe they did record it, so we'll be sending you that. We'll post a copy of the recording on our website as well uh, to check out. So hope that uh, you enjoyed it. And remember, the biggest thing, you know, the biggest thing I want you guys to take away um, from today is this um, exercise. Do this exercise, you know, where you look at your last 10 trades and figure out those numbers. So uh, thanks again. I hope, hope you guys have a wonderful afternoon. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. I'll uh, you know give you my email, Morgan at tradingpub.com. But uh, you know keep learning from uh, Fausto and uh, making money in the market. All right, thanks everyone. Have a great afternoon.